Hi everyone, my name is Jen Anderson. I am the general curator at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm Zoological Park located in sunny St. Augustine, Florida. And we're going to spend about a 30 minutes or so talking about our wonderful native bird rookery and swamp that we have. The swamp exhibit is about two acres and it includes over 250 American alligators and one pair of American crocodiles. This time of year we have hundreds of na uh, native west uh, sorry native wading birds including all different species of herons and egrets and we have wood storks and roseate spoonbills as well they come into our rookery and they build nests we do nothing but build their habitat and provide native vegetation and they come back year after year the alligators are a big part of why the wading birds come to nest in our rookery and we can talk a little bit more about that so I'm just wondering if we have any questions yet, otherwise I can talk about more about what you're seeing on the camera. So this time of year, we have a lot of alligators that are coming out of the water where they spend a lot of their time in the winter. It's nice and warm there. But the sun's coming up, it's higher up in the sky as we approach summertime, and they come out to bask and just build, a, they get lots of uh, energy from that sun. So where do our alligators come from? Well, we get them from all different places. Many of them were hatched out at the alligator farm. The St. Augustine Alligator Farm has been in operation since 1893. So we do have a lot of older alligators that are out in our swamp, but there are some younger ones as well. If you have alligators at other zoos, they may have been born and bred at our facility. But also, they sometimes are uh, nuisance animals that were collected out of the wild or if you have an alligator at home as a pet and you weren't supposed to and they get confiscated by the local wildlife authorities, well, a lot of times they end up at our facility. So we get many alligators from all different locations, including the ones that are sometimes found in a northern pond. So what do we do when our gators are fully grown? Well, they live out in the swamp. So we have different pools and ponds throughout our, our zoo and it's kind of that they upgrade in size depending on the size of the alligators and so the alligators that are the largest tend to be in the swamp. How do we operate on a sick alligator? Well, <laughs> typically we use our vets which are the University of Florida and they are fantastic zoological medicine vets and just today we had to have a checkup on one of the alligators out in the swamp. So they happen to be here, the vets were here, so we just caught them up and we just do a manual restraint. We just may have a rope around the neck and then just some electrical tape around the mouth and uh, then we let the vets kind of check things. If we are going to do radiographs or a CT scan on an alligator, we actually just tie them down to a board. We don't do sed sedatives because uh, it's a reptile and cold-blooded animals do not do well with medical uh, physical, uh, that type of restraint, excuse me, anesthesia. How long have I worked with alligators? Well, I started working here at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm in 2000. Uh, I have worked at a couple other facilities, but this place is very special and uh, we all love being here. So in our park alone, uh, we probably have close to 400 alligators right now and over 250 live in the swamp, but we do have alligators in almost every single zoo across the United States. Uh, do we allow our alligators to breed? Well, yes, there are males and females in the swamp, and those are all adult alligators. And the beauty is the alligator, the female alligators lay eggs. Eggs are great. It's really easy to harvest eggs, and they make these beautiful nest mounds that show us where the eggs have been laid. And so we just get a few zookeepers out and we go out there and we just dig up the eggs and we hatch out a very small number every year or every other year. I'm talking about a couple dozen alligators and that's just kind of to make up for the ones that uh, get older and you know things don't live forever and so we make sure that we have some. Our facility is called the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. We are known for alligators but we have actually never farmed alligators here. But people come here expecting to see alligators so we make sure that we will always have a few for them to see. Uh, otherwise, for the most part, we just um, get the eggs as, f as soon as we can and um, we just get rid of them. Um, so we have had a better accurate count of our swamp alligators. In the past, we've said there was less and there have been less, but we do move animals, continue to move animals into the swamp as they get larger. 
And so that is why our number of alligators has increased in the swamp in the last 10 years or so. The biggest alligator that we have here at the zoo is not in the swamp. He actually lives in our lagoon. So if you've ever been here, we're a small zoo, we're seven acres, but we sure pack it in and we have lots of fantastic things to see. Our largest alligator is Balmer and he is in the lagoon and is a big male and he's just shy of 14 feet. So not only do we have alligators here, we have every species of crocodilian that currently exists on the planet and that's 24 species. So we have them all, but of course we have the alligators and that is what you are primarily seeing on this wonderful explore.org uh, camera. Is it true that alligators grow a foot a year? That is an average growth rate for the first four years of life, a rapid growth rate early on. They're eating everything. They have protection of a mother, at least for the first couple years while they're the smallest. Once they get to about four feet in length, they are almost a top predator then. That's not very big, but there's not much else besides man that's going to hurt them at that size. And so they slow down. Now reptiles do grow their entire lives, but at a much slower rate as they get larger. Um, how long are alligators pregnant for? Well, they have eggs and they are actually called gravid and they lay their eggs and then the incubation period for those eggs can be between two and three months. And they typically lay anywhere from 20 and up to 40 eggs in a clutch. Do alligators tend to have a longer lifespan in captivity? I would say yes. So here in Florida alone, in the wild, there are 1.2 million alligators. And those alligators are in every single pond, canal, uh, retention pond that you can find around. And they, they usually are in, a, they kind of maybe interfere or become nuisance alligators because people feed them. And when people feed them, they start approaching people. Well, people don't like that. They call FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife, and they complain about the nuisance alligator. And then typically those alligators are um, euthanized by the trappers and used for meat and hide. So a lifespan for an alligator in the wild is typically shorter than what we're doing here because we don't consider our alligators a nuisance and so they can live a lot longer. We say that they live about 60 to 80 years, kind of like a person, some longer, some not quite so long. You guys are asking very great questions and you can keep on asking them. Um, so back to our breeding, we, uh, most all alligator species or crocodilian species are nest mounders, which means they make that beautiful pile of leaf debris and sand and grass and they make a big pile and they, they dig a hole in the middle and they lay their eggs in there and the eggs start cooking. So almost all of the species of crocodilians lay these nest mounds. So not only the American alligators, but we can definitely closely control our breeding. We allow them to breed and then we just decide if we want to hatch out the eggs or not. The wonderful thing about incubating eggs artificially in our incubators, though we will often leave some in the nest to hatch out naturally, um, is we can control the gender of those eggs and the, the resulting hatchlings. So certain temperatures, are, uh, certain eggs are incubated at certain temperatures, those equal males, and the same with females as well. Are the alligators a threat to the spoonbills? Well, yes, in some regards. But our wading bird rookery has on average about 600 bird nests a year. And we have seven different species that nest out there. And they nest there because of the alligators. They, their favored location is an island that we have in a swamp. And we have this magnificent live oak tree that is gigantic. It's multi-trunked and takes over most of the island. And they love nesting in there. And the reason why is because the largest nest predators for wading birds are tree climbing things, your raccoons, your possums, feral cats and snakes. And when you're on an island nesting and that island is patrolled by alligators that are circling around and around and around, they're eating all those things that are passing through. Or the raccoons may decide there's an alligator there and another one there and another one there. I'm not passing over here. I'm going to go try to find another meal somewhere else. So the alligators actually act as security patrol for the wading birds and the young of those wading birds have a much higher survival rate nesting 
<clears throat> excuse me, nesting over alligators than not at all. Um, there is some loss on occasion when the, the nesting birds go down to either eat on the water's edge or collect some nesting material, but overall they have a much higher survival rate. So uh, survival of the fittest and uh, making sure they stay away from those large critters. Uh, do male alligators fight with other males to mate with females? They do get a little bit aggressive and territorial this time of year, and this is the time of year we do see some scuffles and that is because they all want the females. Um, but the males tend to have their certain areas of the swamp they hang out at and the females can approach them or not if they are so in inclined. Can you tame alligators? Um, alligators are intelligent. They learn simple things. So many of our alligators are trained. They have their own names and we we call them by their names and they come. They know if it's not their name and they come over to us, they're not gonna get what they're looking for. Uh, some of them know stay, literally, typically. They're usually pretty good at that one. We get we say water and they go in the water. It, they We do a lot of simple commands. And we also do target, where you have a pole with something on the end of it and they have to touch their nose to it to get a reward. And by training an animal to target, you can move them around to where you want to and it's a huge reduction in stress for both staff and for the animals. Can you give us a tour of the facility? We'd love to see it. Well, the wonder of this explore.org camera is you can see um, a good portion of our swamp. It does pivot around, especially as the nesting birds are coming in daily at this point. They will st soon start filling up the trees right around the camera and you will see that location. Otherwise, we would love to have you come visit. Uh, we're a small zoo. You can just come here in a few out for a few hours, though some people stay all day. You can come and go as you please, and it's a beautiful place. And next time I'll see if I can work out getting um, a portable device and I can walk around and show you a little bit about what we have here. Uh, what is the actual incubation period of an alligator egg, and can that be controlled by heat? So yes, once again, uh, alligator eggs take between two and three months to hatch. And there's that wide range because at the lower temperatures is it takes longer for the embryo to develop until it's time to hatch than the higher temperatures where they basically cook faster and then they hatch out faster. Um, females tend to hatch out at the higher temperature and males at the lower temperature, though there are some mixed ranges of temperatures in between. You can have some males and females at the same time. So when we're looking at what we want to hatch out for the year, say it's a critically endangered Siamese crocodile. And we know that there's a lot of females already in the, in the zoo population. So if we get eggs, we definitely want to make sure that we're going to put most of those in to, turn, to hatch out as males and uh, balance things out. Works great. Do you feed the alligators live animals as food? No, we do not. Uh, we feed them mostly a Missouri crocodilian pellet. It's like a large biscuit, it's about this big, and it's fish-based. It's super easy, it's like a giant dog cookie, um, but specifically designed for the health and proper nutrition of a crocodile or alligator. And so we feed that, and that's mostly what we're doing in the feeding demonstrations, and when we feed the swamp a big meal once a week, we're feeding, uh, I think it's about just over 200 pounds of these pellets, just in one feeding alone. We also love to feed out rats. People love seeing rats flying through the air, uh, but they are dead rats and they come here that way. We get them all nice and pre-packaged from a wonderful company called Rodent Pro. And it's, it's very handy. Otherwise, we would have to have a full-time staff just to handle the amount of prey items that we do feed. So not only do we feed rats, we also feed out chickens and fish. Now in the swamp, the alligators do have full access to whatever they want to snack on, unbeknownst to us, and that would be uh, raccoons, feral cats, they do have tilapia in their swamp, um, and whatever else happens to pass on through there. So someone from Scotland asks, why are crocodiles and alligators disliked by humans? Well, there's 
humans are scared of something that's bigger than them and stronger than them. I, I feel like people just want to have full control of their environment and when there's a large predator in their way, it's, it's, it's a little bit worrisome sometimes for some people. Uh, but it's no matter where you live in the world, you probably have a, a, a wild animal that is a top predator in the environment in your area and just learn their habits and then you can learn how to avoid uh, meeting them at times or, that are not the best times. So whether it's bears or panthers or alligators or crocodiles, um, just make sure you be more, you become more familiar. Do some research about their, their habitats and their habits and um, respect them and they should respect you back. Do we free gators? We do not free alligators. Um, once again, there are 1.2 American alligators already in Florida, and many of them are um, are called into FWC, the Florida Wildlife Commission, as nuisance alligators. So then they end up being caught by alligator trappers. And so we don't wanna do that. And our alligators are extremely happy. They're well fed, they're well taken care of. They have top veterinarians and top nutritionists and top keeper staff. And so, they, they seem just fine being here. We provide them with all of their needs and uh, we, we like to have them here and they like to be here. How many teeth do alligators have? They have about 90 conical shaped teeth throughout their mouth. Unlike people who we have one set of teeth that we lose and then we have our adult set, alligators replace their teeth their entire lifetime. It doesn't operate it like the sharks where the front comes out and they have all these back rows kind of coming up to replace it. They just have the teeth coming in from the roots underneath and pop out uh, the old teeth. So um, as long as they have proper gum health, keep their teeth clean, uh, go to the dentist. <laughs> as long as they don't have any gum issues, they will keep uh, producing teeth their entire life. So the species that we have of birds that are nesting in our rookery, so right now there are roseate spoonbills and we actually have some chicks already out there that have started hatching, but they have chosen nests at the very tip tops of cabbage palm trees. And we still have spoonbills coming in daily building new nests and they will be building them soon around the location of this explore.org camera. Uh, we also have great egrets and wood storks starting to incubate their eggs. And then after that, we'll come in the smaller species. We have snowy egrets, tricolored herons, little blue herons, and cattle egrets all nest within that two acre rookery as well. Uh, we also have green herons that nest here on property, but they do it in other parts of the zoo. They don't like all the chaos of the rookery and they prefer to have more of a, a solitary, quiet nest area. Are any of your gators turned over to you by fish and wildlife? Yes, all the time. Um, typically, it's for people that have acquired alligators as pets somehow, whether uh, legally or not so legally, but in, they don't have the proper permits. And so someone finds out that they do keep this animal that they're not supposed to as a pet, and then they get confiscated. And then we receive uh, many alligators yearly from wildlife, fish and wildlife uh, state agencies from around the country and they send them to here. We have many, many, probably about a dozen a year, but I know that other zoos around the country also receive some. We just are able to house them easier than other places that have limited pool space for alligators. Do I prefer animals in captivity or free? I don't prefer either. I would love them to be in both. We would, we all would love to go and see many of these animals in the wild, and we do. And all zookeepers go out and they go out in the field and they find animals in the field and they study them there and they read all about them and they come here and they use all that to take the best captive care of the animals that are under their care here. Our animals that we have here at the zoo and other zoos around the country, they're not suitable for release in the wild. We do release things to the wild, but what we do is it's not adults that we have here, it would be the young offspring. And they're the ones that are gonna go somewhere else and get trained on how to avoid predators and how to eat the native foods and recognize the native foods for those releases to be most successful. 
Why, what's the biggest difference between alligators and crocodiles? Well, it's you hear about the head shape. Alligators tend to have a broader U-shaped head, and allig uh, crocodiles have a very long, slender snout. But there's 24 species, so and only two species of alligators. So I guess the biggest difference is alligators cannot excrete salt out of their body. So you hear the term crocodile tears? Well, that's because they're excreting salt. So crocodiles can go anywhere they want. They can be in salt water, brackish water, fresh water. American alligators, though, they primarily are fresh water. You will see them over where there's brackish water or in the ocean, even salt water, but that's very limited and they need to quickly get back to fresh water. So that's one of the biggest differences, but because of the shape of their head, alligators, even a full adult alligator, is naturally going to only consume something like a raccoon or smaller. Just with their head shape, it's not, it's a strong bite, but it's not designed like a crocodile snout. Crocodile snouts being more longer, longer and more slender, their shape is made for, lar for ripping large chunks out of large items. And so their behavior is a big difference, the behavior towards us. Alligators see us, oh, you're way bigger than a raccoon. I don't want to mess with you. Crocodiles say, hey, you look like a snack. So we just kind of respect that and understand that. Um, is it true that alligators have been on Earth for millions of years? Actually, no. Uh, alligators uh, have not been around that long, but there have been other versions of crocodilians, such as Sarcosuchus and Dinosuchus, that were around millions of years ago. Are alligators endangered or at risk? American alligators are no longer an endangered species like they were in the 1970s. They have come back with a vengeance. The beauty is they lay huge clutches of eggs, so as long as their eggs aren't collected, um, and then the alligators aren't persecuted for being this scary predator, their numbers rebounded very quickly. Some other animals around the world don't have the ability to produce 20 to 40 offspring at one time and recover their numbers quickly, um, but it worked out well for alligators. The alligator farming industry, though the St. Augustine Alligator Farm is not a farm, having alligator farming be popular in this country actually benefits the American alligator because they are seen as a resource and a money maker because of their hides and their meat. And so it's, a, it's one of the reasons why the alligators have uh, come back from being endangered in the wild. They are now no longer threatened at all, but the American crocodile, which is found in the very southern tip of Florida, is an endangered species in the United States. So the alligator is still protected because of the American, cro American crocodile. People can get them confused very easily, and if uh, you can say, I thought that was an alligator and you, you, uh, pers you did something to a crocodile, um, so they, they, right now they still are protected because of the American crocodile. How heavy are alligators on average? Well, a female gets nine, maybe 10 feet in length. That's a really big female alligator. Uh, eight to nine feet is typical, and she may just weigh 150 pounds maximum. Uh, uh, but the big males can get much larger, and they can get up to 14 feet, though there have been a couple monsters a little bit bigger than that. And they can weigh anywhere from 14, 600, of 400 to 600 pounds. What species of crocodilian have you enjoyed working with the most? <laughs> well, right now we're, I mean, we love them all, but right now we're, we're excited about the Indian gharial. That is a critically endangered species from India and Nepal and then Pakistan and maybe a couple other countries, but it's primarily just found in India now. And last year, we hatched out the first Indian gharial in captivity outside of its native range. And we have been trying to do that for years, doing all these different things to try to encourage our trio, one male and two females, to successfully nest. So it, it, it took diet changes, it took enclosure modifications, supplemental heat, even though we're in Florida, uh, trying all these different things. And so we did hatch out a baby. And so right now, and they're amazing. They're, they're very different than the other crocodilians. They have a very long, slender snout, and that is made for taking swift movement underwater and fast-moving streams to catch fish. So they eat primarily fish. Do alligators get used to their zookeepers, and can they recognize other zookeepers, each zookeeper? Yes. 
So each alligator kind of has their favorite zookeeper they work with, or their few, and so you'll see that um, if you want, come to visit and you see our Realm of the Alligator show. And so that's in our lagoon, and one of our zookeepers goes in, and there are 36 alligators in there, I believe, and they're all almost all males. And each zookeeper and alligator have their own preferred individuals they like to work with and have a best working relationship with. And otherwise you can tell when they're grouchy or um, they just don't want to be worked with that day or they would rather sit over in the sun than come to you or they start hissing at you and that's not an alligator you want to work with. <laughs> but they do have their preferred individuals both, both ways, keepers and alligators and alligators have their preferred keepers. Well, thank you so much for your time, and I've loved sharing more information about the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. And make sure you continue to watch our camera, and we'll do this again. Take care.